Hey guys, Jason Haber here with Future City. Today I talked with council member Brad Lander about probably the most pressing challenge facing cities today, the climate crisis. The day we did this interview, there was a massive rally taking place, not just here in New York City, but all over the world. And so we looked at the big issues facing climate change and what we can do about it. I hope you like this segment today. All right, Brad Lander. Jason Haber. Councilman Lander. So good to be here. Thank you for coming on here today. Thanks for inviting so, me. I wanted you here on this very specific day, September, September 20th, we're taping this for a really specific reason. That reason is the shirt you're wearing. I'm getting ready to go. Okay. My daughter, I'm watching where she is. We're meeting in Foley Square right after this. It's Climate Strike Friday. You know, I hope people have already seen the pictures from all over the world, from Amazing. South Africa and Europe and Asia. Young people are rising up. There was a quote in the Times today that moved me to anger and sadness at the same time. It was something to the effect of children are organizing because adults failed. Yep. What a powerful statement and how true. There was this image uh, that Chris Hayes tweeted this morning of a picture from Paris or somewhere in France that young people had set up a gallows uh, and three young people were standing with nooses around their neck on, I don't know if they were real ice blocks or plastic made to look like ice blocks. But that's how they feel. They feel like they are being left on a warming planet where everyone knows People are going to die. People are going to be displaced. The climate refugee crisis is going to grow into the millions. And and everyone who's who's honest, who's paying attention, who reads the science, who looks at the reports, knows that's coming. And yet we are not yet capable of the urgency that's necessary to hand them a, a planet other than one that's uh, beset by disaster. Um, and, you know, you wouldn't the ways that they are saying we're not going to stand for that. We're going to make ourselves as loud as we possibly can to demand some change. Uh, today with the climate strikes, kicked off by Greta Thunberg, but in what Sunrise is doing and the Green New Deal is very hopeful. Um, and and we need that energy because the change that's necessary is beyond the kind of change we are usually able to produce. I think H.L. Mencken once wrote, when someone tells you it's not about the money, it's about the money. <laughs> I feel like that's the way it is with climate change. Agreed. Like people are in denial because there's so much money at, at stake. Well, I think two separate things are both true and they reinforce each other. Um, and Bill McKibben had a really good article in The New Yorker this week on kind of a follow the money take. So absolutely i mean the fossil fuel companies everything not just about the selling of oil but everything about the selling of all the goods is linked into a consumptive extractive fossil fuel economy and that's right. how people make money and there's trillions of dollars at stake it is also true that we're a species that gets into habits and once we're doing things over and over again and we set up those habits they aren't easy to change and i think it's like a feedback loop between right. Um, it's like, I don't know, there was this great article I read one time that was really about like uh, nacho cheese Doritos and the feedback loop between our addiction to them, like your inability not to eat the next one and capitalism's addiction to the profits that it makes by sell them, you know, makes by right. selling them to you means uh, the combination of sort of, uh, in that case, kind of food science and capitalism and our addiction to the ways we we've done things right. is a dangerous combination and that's where we're sitting so ready let's keep that analogy going you know the way to stop you from getting that next eating the next dorito to tax you indeed right like if you absolutely knew you had to pay five cents that the next dorito it would slow you down we have there's a you know we have the ability we know how behaviors get changed right. we have to be willing to change them we have to you know and some of that is going at the money which is exactly why different kinds of taxes can do it some of that will be on the investment side which is why the green new deal is important um but i i see you have here one of the what items is this? okay uh, let's that, talk about this here in front of us plastic bag yeah so um plastic pollution broadly with plastic bags as one of its most unnecessary elements is really a dramatic crisis. The volumes of single-use plastics that are getting dumped into the oceans, that are getting dumped into landfills, um, that block up our storm drains, that kill sea turtles, that move into these giant gyres in the ocean. There's now two um, of them, right? One off by California and one off of, I think it's um, by Japan. They're massive in the scale. The size of small states right. at this point. Um, um, and there's no need for it. We know how to stop it. So plastic bags are a great example. And they're one that I had been fighting like a white whale for the longest right. period of time for about the last decade. We and talked about it for probably 10 years. Yes. Yeah. So and lots of other places have gotten way ahead of us at this and not just, you know, California and, you know, right. Portland. 
but Ireland and Italy and Israel. You know the first country that banned plastic bags? Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Well, they've got... Because of the storm. So what happened was in 2000, 2001, they had these massive storms and the storm drains were backed up by plastic bags. Mm. And so they were the first ones, believe it or not, to do a nationwide ban in 2002. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. 20, almost 20 years ago. You know, we don't need them. Uh, Everyone, you know, you remember to bring your wallet or your keys or your briefcase when you go to work. You bring your umbrella when it's raining you can bring a reusable bag when you go to the grocery store to do your shopping but this is where everyone's gotten in those habits so the plastics industry likes to make money selling them we get in the habit and something has to interrupt that and there's really two choices and what we're finally doing in new york is combining those two choices first is to ban plastic bags altogether we do not need you know uh, single-use paper bags are not great but they're better than single-use plastic but the second thing is even for those single-use paper bags starting march 1st 2020 coming soon yeah statewide plastic bags will be banned And, and here in new york city we're also adding a five cent fee on those paper bags and what it's been shown in study after study after study everywhere across lines of age and race and class and family size and is that little five cent cent fee functions to enable people 80 percent of the people to bring reusable bags about 80 percent of the time and you get massive reductions in solid waste People don't have to pay the five cents because suddenly with that little signal that comes from the fact that we don't like to pay for something we don't have to pay for, people start bringing reusable bags in in massive numbers. We'll get rid of plastic bag pollution entirely and we'll get uses of single-use paper bags um, overwhelmingly, all from a really simple thing. And the little bit of money that people do pay goes to an environmental fund that helps us keep our waterways cleaner and keep making progress on other environmental issues. And do you think that People are now waking up to understand that most cities are coastal cities. Almost all are coastal cities. Most are low-lying. If we don't do something about this now, they ain't going to be around 150 Yeah, years. well, I mean, look, the young people are realizing it. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're stuck in a democracy crisis. You know, we have a climate crisis, but right. in between us and fixing the climate crisis is our democracy crisis. So even though you know most people in those coastal cities are waking up, and obviously the young people are waking up, our politics aren't yet waking up enough to take the kinds of bold action are needed. Now, we've got some good examples. New York City didn't only ban plastic bags. Um, we also took the most aggressive action that any city has taken to require that our buildings reduce their right. energy use dramatically. We've committed to do that as a city. The state is committed to moving to full-scale renewable power. Um, you know, the energy around the Green New Deal is part of what will be needed to put the money there to convert our grid, to build the new forms of wind and solar and uh, wave and clean renewable power. There's a lot to do. And you, you, it takes a big, big commitment to make the behavior change and bring the resources in. Then you really have to go down in the weeds because that means retrofitting every building. Right. It means building enough solar farms to replace the the natural gas plants we now have. Um, I think people are waking up uh, today. It's impossible not to feel it on the streets of the city. Right. Um, but, but doing it fast enough and doing it in a really serious, get down to the details and get it done way. It's hard to have confidence given where we are right now. Problem is, I liken it to the to the smoking debate, where for a while those who sort of owned uh, tobacco companies refused to even believe that nicotine was addictive, and then there was this debate about how bad it was for you. Like we're still, I fear, in the actual debate about climate change. There should be no debate anymore. Correct. And look, obviously, time is different on this than it was on tobacco, right? Like a lot of people were were killed as a result of the tobacco industry hiding the ball. They knew actually right. that they were killing For their customers years, long decades. before the 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 political will was there to shine a spotlight on it and to make change. So that did enormous harm to enormous numbers of people. But it, you know, it was then possible to change that and fix the problem after at a great human cost. But still, the window of time to solve the problem did not close. And we are, the climate's not like that. Um, right. We are right now, by not moving faster, um, 
irreversibly continuing the levels of warming that then, you know, once the ice caps melt and the cycle gets going, um, it always matters doing less. It's not like there is yes or no, will we be impacted by the climate crisis? We are already seeing the impacts and we are going to see more, but it is in our hands to keep them more manageable, to bring them down to levels where our efforts at resiliency can be successful, uh, a, cli- a climate refugee crisis is, is going to come, but if it's millions instead of tens or hundreds of millions, right. then we can do something about it, but only if we move faster than we're moving, and I agree with you. W- you know, there was this amazing sign I saw, actually is from um, some German students, non-Jewish German students, uh, in the uh, you know in the run up to and during the Holocaust, and they produced these flyers that they ultimately got got killed for s- s- distributing. And the simplest one was, if you know, why don't you act? Hmm. And that's where we are. We know we know what's coming. We know what we're doing, and we have not yet taken anywhere close to the action that that knowledge requires. Um, so, you know, I, you just, it's an issue on which I just go back and forth because on a day like today, you can't not feel hopeful. Right. Those young people are out there and they're rising up and it looks like they have the energy and the capacity to power change. And on the other hand, despite that energy and despite that knowledge, we're nowhere near the policy solutions that we need. We're also at a point where several million people who were too young to vote in 2016 will now be eligible for the first time and they may tip the balance potentially. Uh, of the next election because we have a president who believes that I, I don't know what he believes but we have a president who has said that uh, climate change is a hoax perpetrated by the Chinese or something yeah. ridiculous like that so when you don't in the absence of American leadership which is always led on the really big ticket issues of the day and I would argue climate change is the big ticket issue of the day nationally that um, we have it requires the active and citizen look right. by far we are per capita responsible for the most harm exactly. here we have the responsibility to do it but yes we need to win the white house and we need to win the senate in order to be able to move the country forward in the ways that the future demands and requires so yes you know today because it's climate strike day most important thing to do is get out in the streets with young people but in the coming year right. the most important thing that people can do for the climate ironically is not bring a reusable bag to the grocery store it's not even uh you know necessarily pushing on any particular climate issue it's doing the electoral mobilization to make sure we knock donald trump out of the white house bring in a, a democrat hopefully a progressive one, and win the U.S. Senate, if we do those things, then we will have the political conditions that make it possible to take action at the scale that we require. And if we don't, there's no chance that we will. So We're kind um, of on the clock right now, right? Yes. Like as humanity. I mean, the planet is, I feel like this is... And like connecting the dots it. between the elections and the issue is really important. I feel a little like, you know, this is the students are arising today like they did after Parkland when right. the students were all out at their schools. Exactly. And those kids really got it. They're like, yes, it, it should be true that this would be a nonpartisan issue. Everyone should recognize that we need, you know, sensible gun reform and gun control. And everyone honest should recognize we need dramatic action to confront the climate crisis. Those should not be partisan issues, but they have become partisan issues. Yes. And we are not going to be able to have common sense gun laws and keep kids from having to, you know, uh, face massacres in their schools. And we are not going to be able to confront the climate climate crisis unless we win next November. And so we are on the clock for sure. My, my first my first employer was Gail Sheehy, the, the author, mm. and she was dumbfounded. I mean, this is going back to 2000 about the, the Republicans denying climate change then. And she said to me, she says, don't Republicans have grandkids, too? I mean, and because it's like if you do, um, you would think about the future. But the difference, I think, between, say, 20 years ago and now is that climate change was something that your grandchildren had to worry about. I think it's actually it's actually something that we need to worry about now. Like, for sure. The, the, the recent storms, for example, I found really interesting because the the, the storm that went through that uh, destroyed the Dorian, that destroyed the parts of the Bahamas. The models were showing it to accelerate at a certain rate, which were based on historical trends, right? And then the storm grew well beyond the, what the models had forecasted. That was the fourth storm that had grown beyond 
the historical models. You know yes. why? The historical models aren't factoring in for climate change. So the storms are getting much more energy today than they could before. Yeah. And the wind patterns are different because of climate change. Yeah. So the historical patterns no longer work and the storms are getting bigger. So you're seeing it in so many different ways. Oh, look, we already have climate refugees. We had to retreat from neighborhoods in Staten Island. So there's right. climate refugees from Staten Island. There's climate refugees in Bangladesh and a lot more coming. We are facing it right now. It will be worse for our kids and worse for their grandkids if we don't take dramatic action. And yes, the uh, the politics of hate that has some voters um, preferring a president and a politics that um, demonizes immigrants and divides right. more than they love their grandchildren and recognize what's necessary to build in and invest a, in a future um, and be open to listening to and understanding the science. Um, that's the the most demonic force of our time, um, you know, and, and the work at every level, at the electoral level, at the issue level, at the human level to change that is the most I urgent. Mean, I think the, the president gets a lot of laughs when he says, oh, the TV isn't working, honey, because the wind isn't blowing tonight. Yeah. And then everyone laughs and they think it, it's really fun. I don't think that's funny at all. I think it's disgusting. Correct. Um, I think it's such a, it's obviously a gross misunderstanding of how wind power works. Um, well, look, you know, that anti-elitist, you know, the, the anti-elitist elements and efforts in, in authoritarian populism are longstanding. It's easy for folks who want to rile up a set of kind of lower middle class voters, in this case, white voters. Um, you know, you, you, you mobilize them downward by right. saying, look at those immigrants coming for your job. Look at those people of color, you, you know, traditional kind of racist stereotypes. But you also mobilize them by saying, look at those coastal elitist environmentalists. Let's mock them, too. And unfortunately, that can work. People like that. They feel ha right. ha ha inside the joke. And yeah, you know, the work to say, OK, let's just stop a minute here. Where's your power currently coming from? If it's coming from coal, if it's coming from natural gas, the consequences of that are a world that it's pretty clear your grandchildren will not be able to live on in the same way that you do. That is a harder message. And that's why the president has been successful is that it's a hateful, cheap message, but it with some people no, it does work. But they feel empowered by it. I, was, I saw sure. a photo of a guy at his shirt from a rally last week. It said, it said Obama called me a clinger, clinging to my guns. Hillary called me a deplorable, basket of deplorables. Trump calls me an American. Yeah. And so they feel this like, connection with him. And um, Correct. And look, there are people doing good work on those issues. There's a group People's Action that's out in Appalachia and in white, you know, talking to white working class voters. Um, you know, there's young people in all these places who are just as nervous about the planet. And the right. climate strike is taking it, place today in Wisconsin and Michigan and Ohio yeah. and West Virginia. Those people want a planet they can live on and we can make common cause with them. But I mean, it shouldn't be a politi the political issue should be how exactly you go about it. And you can have a, a good debate on that, I think. Um, with carrots and sticks, taxes versus incentives. I think there are lots of interesting Correct. ideas that Republicans can bring to the table if only they would pull up a freaking chair. Correct. But they're not. No, which is why we just have to do more electoral organizing because there is no choice now but to win. There might have been a time when bipartisan compromise was possible on climate, on immigration, on guns. Um, that is not this moment. There's no evidence there's a possible bipartisan compromise, and that means we got to win the White House, we got to win the Senate. And it, so if you don't win the Senate, what's your biggest fear, that the legislation just stalls? Yes. I mean, there's a lot that can be done by executive action. So, you know, part of the reason why I'm an Elizabeth Warren fan right. is that so I believe early, I was the first New York yeah. State elected official to endorse Elizabeth Warren back in April. And part of the reason for that is well, we need to win the Senate. We're going to do everything we can. But in, whether we win the Senate or don't win the Senate, executive leadership matters. And not just those executive orders, but building those agencies to be strong. So signing back on to Paris, rebuilding the EPA, um, it, and in robust ways, there's a lot farther that a president can go. Even when we, we need the Green New Deal, we need the Senate. But yeah. in its absence, there is really meaningful work that can be done at an executive agency level. And in a way that builds more supporters. That's the other thing here. Part of what's good about the Green New Deal and its approach to coal, for example, is trying to imagine a, ju a just transition and make sure that communities that have been relying right. on coal for their livelihoods for generations get the kinds of compensation and transition that make it possible for people to move on and lead decent lives. Because 
even if people understood that it was doing great ha you know damage to the planet if you're saying your community is going to have nothing for it of course people are going to say I, I can't support that so we got to find ways to take steps that keep building the levels of support for what's possible right. um yeah I mean, I always think with coal miners, actually, that AI and automated automated machines and automated learning is going to make that job, even if they, even if we said, let's go coal crazy in this country, um, it's going to make the job obsolete anyway. Like, they need to be transitioned to new sectors, whether it's in the service economy or something else, Absolutely. immediately. Yeah. Um, but uh, Donald Trump won't talk about it. No, that. no, no, no. He wants to use it as one more of these issues that divides right. people for political I mean, purposes. He'll talk a lot about clean coal. He doesn't know what clean coal is. No, he just no, thinks no. it's clean. He doesn't know about natural gas, how much methane natural gas releases is terrible for the environment. There's no good fossil-based solution That's that correct. gets us anywhere forward. None. That's correct. And it is true that wind power only works when the wind is blowing. And that does actually mean you need, if to, for solar and wind, you have to build more capacity right. than you need at any given moment because you can't count on the sun and the wind at each moment to right. provide it. So, But that's fine. The answer is just you build enough capacity into your system, but that comes back to finding the money and finding the political will to but get it done. But it's also investment in technologies, for example. So Correct. it's not just harnessing the sun. It's how much do you harness the sun? Absolutely. How much oh, do you and in New York City, we need, you know, the next step here is is storage, is battery power, because a right. lot of people right now, if you have solar panels on your roof, because of arcane regulatory rules, you can't sell it into the grid when you've got excess capacity. And because of some understandable concerns of the fire department, we don't yet right. have the technology and the storage capacity fully in place at the scale we need for you to be able to store it and hold it for when there is demand. Um, we've got to make both of those things happen. We can do that. Technology will help. So it Political will is critical. Um, systems change, the kind of folks, and this is the kind of work I like to do in government, mm -hmm. bringing partners together who aren't necessarily talking to each other or aligned to uh, to meet the political demand. And then technology will absolutely is a, is a, it's not going to solve it on its own without changes to the political will, but it's absolutely essential an investment component. In it, and then who's funding that investment and absolutely. Our, our tax dollar is going to go for that. And, and right now the administration wouldn't, you know, no, dream no, of they that. want the opposite. Because well, they use the example of what is it? Uh, Solyndra or they, they harp on, you know, like 95% of all ventures fail in the private sector. Can you imagine the private in the public sector if ninety five percent of all agencies <laughs> failed? Yeah. I mean, every it would be a scandal every day. But like yeah. businesses will fail. Then um, the the point is to keep investing into them and get the ones gets the ones that work. That's right. Yeah, it's sort of a venture capital for yeah. approach to government, which sometimes you know you'd like to be able to pay for results all the time. Right. But on some, uh, you know, particularly these, the, the technologies that are particularly necessary to make change here, we're going to need something more but like. I always thought, though, that Republicans would like what you just said, so this venture capital, because it sen sounds free market to them. <laughs> I, I don't know. But they, they don't. I don't understand why not. Well, there are some that do. You know, yeah. there was a set of sort of, you know, thoughtful, honest, look at the facts, more kind of, you know, quote unquote, business conservatives. Yeah who you might have been able to make that deal with, but what Trump and that authoritarian populism stream of Trumpism has done, anti-immigrant sentiment, racism, is to steal the Republican Party. And um, yeah, and they and might as well just be renamed that, the Trump Party, right? Yeah, now. yeah. And you know, once that's the case, then using it as a political issue to whip up your base against opponents is far more what's going to happen than a thoughtful approach to where can we find common ground, what kinds of, you know, more pro market or investment technologies are needed. So, all right. So, those listening today and the watching today, activate, activate. Right? Yes. So, first, if you're not registered to vote, Register to vote. The most important thing. Register to vote. It's yeah. very easy. And obviously, everybody you know in swing states, get them registered to right. vote. Your vote matters if you're in New York. But if you got relatives or friends in, you know, um, uh, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Florida, North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, Knock Texas. Knock on wood, Texas. Yeah. You're here. <laughs> Arizona, too. For sure. Yeah. 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 There are a lot more states that are going to be uh, in play. That's right. That'll determine it. But it's it's about really having an active citizenry yeah. right now. Maybe oh, and so ever. many organizations to get involved with that. You know, sign up for the Sunrise Movement's email. Sign up at 350.org. Right. Um, you know, sign up with some of those resistance organizations, Indivisible. Because, um, yeah, it's like register to vote. Get other folks registered to vote. Get energized and activated connecting the issues you care about to the politics. Um, we just we have this next year and change 
Um, if we are able to connect our, our issues, our passions, and our politics, we can be set up for something that really can be quite beautiful, like has the beauty of today's climate strikes and the energy of the young people. Right. Um, and it is totally urgent. Right. So let's stay, we'll stay on an end on an uplifting note. Stay active, vote, get your friends to vote, and get involved in the issues that you care about, particularly when it comes to the climate, because we're, we don't have a plan B, right? Like, there's no other planet we there can go to last no time There is no planet checked, B, right? as the like, young people say. We just there haven't found it yet, no, I don't there think. There is no planet B. You know, so, so this, is, this is where we make our last stand, like uh, Carl Sagan uh, once wrote. So thank you so much, Brad, for coming on today. Thank Enjoy you, Jason. This was a lot of fun. Awesome. And I'm really excited to see Jason's plan for world domination, <laughs> which I know will invlu- include uh, the kind of hopeful, strong action on the climate crisis. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.